What's up everybody, Miss Montana de Leon here with another relationship vlog and it's about relationships and the longevity of relationships and how people are so quick to call it quits for anything other than cheating, abuse, or neglect or molestation of your children or something like that. Everyone has their own limitations and reasons why they want to leave a relationship but as long as when they leave them they're happy with their decision no matter what people say about why they left or why the relationship didn't work. Doesn't matter, not your business, they left because they felt like they had enough and they reached their own personal limit so they left so i just want to go real quick uh over a post it's a quick 15 second video that i did on instagram and um i got a lot of co-signing on this a lot of people agreeing with what i was saying for the most part this is what the post said and then there's always somebody better than what you got now society has us living in a world of upgrading you want to upgrade to the newest car you want to upgrade to the newest watch machine because it does this and it does that you want to um upgrade your television from the big old box that sits on the floor to the new flat screen that goes on your wall. You want to upgrade when things break and don't work anymore. You want to upgrade to the new iPhone because it has um, flash, you want 4G technology. You want to upgrade. Society has us thinking that we're supposed to upgrade everything, but that does not apply to your relationships. That's one thing that you have to stick it out, work with, grow, and nurture in order to have something real, something that's yours, something that you work hard for. Be content with a person that provides you at least 80% of, of what you require in a relationship. The 80-20 rule, I'm going to do another video about this. The 80-20 rule is basically no one's perfect. If you can find somebody that has at least 80% of what you desire in a relationship out of 100% that you put on the list, and mind you, you put this list in order of things that are most important to the least important. And they don't have that 20% that's down at the bottom of the list that's least important. You should be able to deal with this person. They're not perfect according to your list, but if they don't have that 20% and you accept that they don't have this 20% going on, you accept an imperfect person. You accept an imperfect person. And now they're perfect for you because you have accepted. No one's perfect. No one's going 100% perfect. But if you can find someone who's close to it and you can work with it, deal with them. Um, keep in mind when y'all having arguments about anything other than abuse, cheating, or physical fighting, if you leave a relationship with problems that can be forgiven and fixed, your next relationship will come with its own set of problems as well because no one's perfect. Just like I said, um, every relationship has problems. Everybody comes with their own set of problems, their own set of issues. So you have a relationship here with this one person, something goes left, something goes wrong, you're not you know, happy about it, you wanna leave. We wanna quickly leave. Okay, that's fine. You don't wanna deal with that, cool. You get into another relationship, this person is perfect, wonderful, but then this goes wrong. So what you gonna do, leave again? probably so which is what most people do they jump from relationship to relationship and you're in like five six relationships in a year dealing with people maybe two years five six relationships dealing with people um everyone has their own set of problems if it may not be she farts in her sleep it may be this girl can't cook and you and your last girl you love that about her but she farted too much this new girl don't fart but she don't know how to cook it's always something with somebody if the issues that are going on in your relationship are not that bad and not that detrimental stick it out deal with it overcome it if it's low down your 20 percent of stuff that you require in a relationship and it's not that damn important stick it out so love the one you're with and fertilize your own grass if you can love their imperfections you can have the perfect person for you another thing with relationships is um a lot of people are built to walk away a lot of people have that option to walk away because they make it an option um relationships are very very hard hard work so I suggest that you deal with someone who you care about and love enough to fight through it with them and overcome it with them I can go through the storm with somebody I can go through job loss foreclosure loss of the limb him catching cancer um, his mother died um, I can deal with all that. I can fight through the storm with you. I can fight through whatever storm comes our way. I'm a rider when things get tough, I'm there. When the storm comes at us, I'm there. I'm a ride for you. But if you are the storm and you're bringing the storm into my relationship, you're the storm, you cheating, you beating me, you molesting my kids, um, you're neglecting me or something like that, you're bringing the storm into the relationship. I'm not dealing with that. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna deal with that, I'm sorry. It's not gonna happen, it don't make no sense. But if you're, 
if you're a, a giver and you're doing such and such and such and such, you expect such and such, such return because it's common sense and it's common courtesy and it's loving and it's caring to do such and such and such in a relationship. So you kind of expect that in return, at least the basics, you know what I'm saying? But no relationship is perfect. People don't want to work for it. People don't want to fight for it. They want to just walk away from it. But you have to think about the things that you have to sacrifice and let go, let go of the familiar, let go of the norm and focus on your relationship. Put everything you can into your relationship because nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. It's always gonna be somebody better. Be content with what you got. Put everything you got into what you got. What you put in your relationship is what you're gonna get out of your relationship. You have a mate that does the same thing as you, and putting in and constantly putting in and work towards a relationship, um, you are gonna get that back, hopefully. If they have any kind of common sense, you're gonna get that back, hopefully. But a lot of people don't do that. They're, they can't weather the storm. They, they, they wanna go, they wanna run. They wanna, they wanna, they, they don't wanna deal with it. They don't wanna help you. But I think if people put their relationship aside and bring back a best friend kind of view on their mate, things would be so much better. Things would be so different. You'll look at situations and handle situations different instead of running. Our, our best friend can go through shit in high water and we'll be right there for him and we'll ride for him. But let our mate go through shit in hot water and do bad. We, we leaving because we have the option. We feel like we can just go. I don't want to deal with this. I don't feel like it. Mm, too much. I don't feel like it. But you'll ride for your best friend if your best friend is going through it. Now, wouldn't you? So if you view your mate as your best friend, a lot of situations that people run or leave a relationship for wouldn't even go down. Because a lot of the things that people go through in relationships, if you were to go through that with your best friend, they lost their job. You be like, oh, come sleep on my couch, girl. Come sleep on my house. I got you, girl. I'll take care of you. And bring the kids. I buy them diapers and everything. I got you, boo. You know, they um, their house set on fire. They homeless, girl. Come over here. I got you. I got you. Whatever. Like they got cancer, girl. I'm gonna be over there every day. I'm gonna be taking care of you. I'm gonna be at the hospital. I'm gonna da da da. That's how we treat our best friends. We we run for our best friends. And dog, we've been we've been down since we were three. You know what I'm saying? If you look at your mate as your best friend, when you handle a situation, or you have arguments, or you have disagreements about something, or something's going on, or it's not perfect at the time, if you look at them with the eyes of, this is my best friend, what would I do in a situation with my best friend? What would I do in this situation? You wouldn't run, you wouldn't cut him off. Now, if your best friend humps your man or something like that, you'd be like, oh, no, I didn't my bitch. Okay, understand it with your husband, mess around with another chick, leave him. But, Anything else, you know you and your best friend gonna ride out. You know you're gonna be there. You know you're gonna ride. You know you're gonna be a rider. Stop, take, take, just take the relationship mask off for a second. Take the relationship hat off, the girlfriend, boyfriend hat off for a second, and put on your best friend hat and look at things in that matter. And I bet you you have more reason and more understanding of why you should stay and work it out. Why you should stay and fertilize your grass. Why you should stay and help be a helpmate. Why you should stay and be a team player. If you look at your relationship and your spouse like your best friend, when things aren't so good, when things go left, I bet you got a lot more reasons to stay rather than to go. All right, but I can probably touch bases on that whole look at your maybe your best friend in another video, but not right now. I'll talk to you all later. Love some.